Well, good morning. Welcome to the Central Baptist Church this morning. It's so great to see all of your smiling, <coughs> smiling faces. Hey, there we go. Now we got some smiles. So it's good to see you guys. Let's go ahead and stand, and we will open up with some wonderful Christmas music. If this doesn't get you going, I don't know what will.
but broken by a baby's cry. Rejoice in the hallowed manger ground. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God incarnate, here to dwell. Emmanuel.
Thank you, Abby. Appreciate that. All right. With no further ado, Brother Sam, come on down and everyone pay attention. He's got some good stuff for you. I can tell. Is that okay now? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I feel like I'm almost attending all, all the services of Central Baptist Church. Because every Sunday morning when you have your service, our time is 8 8.30 in the evening, Sunday there. So we are free. We just turn the Facebook on and watch you all. And uh, I praise God for all the uh, services and all the messages and all the good singing that we have been listening these years. And uh, also, uh, when Brother, uh, you know, Angie keeps us informed about all the sick and the prayer request, and we want you to know that we have been <coughs> praying for all those and I'm so happy to see many of you back here in the church today. And today, we have come to the last month of 2023. You know what? It was in 1973 that I became a Baptist, 50 years ago. Till I finish my high school, I have never heard that there is a church called Baptist. Even my wife. And in 1973, 72, when I came to Central Baptist Church, came to the Bible College to study, Brother Matthew brought me to this church. And the Floyds has been so gracious enough to keep us in their home and bring me to this church every Sunday morning and evening and Wednesdays. I started listening to Dr. Norman Wells, who was a great Bible teacher. Many of you know him. And gradually the Lord was speaking to me, but I was resisting him. But there came a point in my life in 1973 that I could not resist to the Spirit of God anymore. So one Sunday morning, I came forward and I took baptism on this baptistry here by Brother Wells and I became a Baptist. When I look back to the last 50 years, the Lord has been so good to us. And in 1975, I went back to India as a missionary, as you all know, out of this church. And I'm grateful to the Central Baptist Church for standing behind us, supporting us, and praying for us all through these 50 years, half a century, though I am not as old as that. <laughs> and the Lord has been so good to us. As you all know, the Lord used us to establish about eight churches in the northern part of India. And recently, a couple of months ago, me and Annie visited some of those churches and it's growing great. And we have two high schools going. One of them is up to 12th grade, and we have over 50, 1,200 students studying there. Every day, though they, none of them are Christians, every day we get the opportunity to preach them about the gospel of Christ. And there is another school, which is only up to 10th grade now, that has only about 450 students now, though it had used to have about 1,550 kids one time. And several of you from Central Baptist Church had visited those works. Of course, Bob, Gob, Bob Cook and Sue Cook, Bob Hayes, Snyders, John and Barney Stephanie, and uh, 
the brother love and several of you have come and seen that work and i praise god what the lord could have could do through a man through a small fellow like me i know that i was not worthy but by god's grace we can do all those things because he strengthens us every day and uh, uh, the time may not permit me to say a lot more but some other time i shall do again this morning i would like to speak to you about doing whatever he says doing whatever he says gospel according to john chapter 2 verse 5 the second part of verse 5 gospel according to john chapter 2 and the second part of verse 5 whatsoever he saith unto you do it dear brothers and sisters let me tell you this morning whatsoever he saith unto you do it in this verse we have the golden rule of a happy and useful christian life do you want to know his peace and joy in your life and in your service do what he says do you want to have a life that is well pleasing to him all the days of your life do what he says do you want to want your field of service to be enlarged do what he says do we need his guidance in our life if so do what he says then we must do all what he says if we can live a life in obedience to this golden rule we shall always be filled with the glory of his presence there is no doubt let me read that passage of the scripture john chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11 and the third day there was a marriage in cana of galilee and another and the mother of jesus was there and both jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage and when they wanted wine the mother of jesus said unto him they have no wine and jesus said unto her woman what have i to do with thee my hour is not yet come his mother saith unto the servants whatsoever he saith and to you do it and there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing six containing two or three firkins a piece and Jesus said unto them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he saith unto them draw out now and bear it to the governor of the feast and they bear it and when the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now this beginning of the miracle did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested for his glory and his disciples believed on him shall you pray 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this precious day that you have given us. Father, this word belongs to you. I did never change us. I belong to you because you have redeemed me after the bondage of sin. You have redeemed these that are come to worship you. Lord, I pray that you may speak to each and every one of us as per our needs this morning. That we may be encouraged as we go out of this church, we may be able to say that the Lord has really spoken to us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. You know, when we read John's chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11, Mary says these words. Whatever he says, do it. That means, however controversy it may seem to you, however controversy it may seem to your ideas, don't worry about it, do what he says. How can Mary be so confident that he would be able to do it? Because in this particular passage, the scripture says Jesus never did a miracle before. This is the beginning of his miracle. You know, we are celebrating Christmas. If at all there is one person in the world that who knows that Jesus Christ is a unique person, she knew it. Because she knew that he did not have a human father. She knew it very well that he is the son of God. So she could be speaking to the servants with all confidence, do what he says. Then, you know what? He speaks to us even today, just like he spoke to the servants 2,000 years ago. When we read verse 7 and verse 8, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Verse 8, And he saith unto them, Drew out now, and bear it unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. You know, because he always spoke authoritatively. God the Father has given him all the authority in the world so he could speak authoritatively, not, you and, not, not like you and me speak. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46 we read, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? During this season, you know, so many people celebrate Christmas not knowing who Jesus Christ is. And many people call him Lord, Lord, and they don't obey what he says. The Lord is sovereign. And so he has a right to dictate to your life and my life. What he says is the final word for all of us. If we knew him as our savior, why do we question what he says? He says with all the authority given to him by the father. And also he speaks personally to us. And whatever he tells you, do it. Jesus I and mean, Mary told the servants these words. He spoke personally to the servants. The guests who came for the marriage from different parts of Judah did not know what Jesus said to the servants. 
even the governor of the feast did not know what jesus spoke to the servants only the servants knew he speaks personally to them and also he speaks personally to you and me today not only that he speaks comprehensively what is meant by comprehensively that means he can speak to us in a convincing manner notice the word whatever no matter what even if it is a small problem or big problem that you face in your life believe that jesus can do it and nothing can happen to you or to your family without his knowledge there is nothing in our lives that he does not know so he speaks to us about all things whether it is small or big he speaks to us personally and also we see he speaks to us instrumentally what do you mean by that that is he speaks to us through others how often we hear the voice of the lord speaking to us to the wise helpful counsel of our friends and our pastor or an elder we must recognize the principle stated in galatians chapter 1 and verse 16 in galatians chapter 1 and verse 16 paul said like this to reveal his son in me that paul knew it for sure that the son of god lives in him to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the heathen immediately i did not comfort not with the flesh and blood when he got saved when the lord called him for his ministry if he had gone and asked gamaliel his teacher his guru he would not have permitted if he had asked his parents they would not have permitted if he had asked his family they would not have permitted so he did not consult with any flesh and blood he made the decision with the lord answering the call of god in his life it was his desire to reveal his son in me dear brothers and sisters in christ that is what god expects every one of us to do the lord often guides us through the counsel of christians good friends then also he speaks to us providentially this is through daily happenings in our life daily circumstances in our life sometimes through sickness sometimes through accidents sometimes through other problems that comes to us and many of you know me and i have shared my testimony so many times i came to the united states that was the first time i came out of india out of my village in 1972 when i came boy everything was different i did not know most of the things that people told me because i did not know english very well i had never seen air conditioning like this i had never seen cars and roads like this man when i came here and after a year or so i thought i got it made why should i go back to india i never wanted to go back to india india as you know today is one of the seven industrialized nations of the world but not at that time you could not even buy a good shirt in india in 1972 because we were a socialistic type country and they were more reliant on soviet russia soviet union than with the free world but things have changed 
Now India has changed. You won't recognize India of 1970s to today. Two years ago when I left, India was the second largest populous country in the world. But in 1923, India has become the largest populous country on this planet with 1.42 billion people. We make everything from aeroplane to, you know, you can imagine. But in those days, we didn't have any of these things. When I came to Cincinnati in 72, we did not even have one Indian restaurant or an Indian store. There were very few Indians and there were few in university students in the University of Cincinnati. So I was going to college, morning I had to study, evening I had to work to sustain myself. I worked full time. Morning six o'clock I go to college and come back, maybe about two o'clock. And as soon as I come, I change my clothes, put my workshop, work clothes and go. There was a factory in North Bend where I worked. I go to get 65 cents an hour. All night I worked. I had to study Hebrew and Greek at the same time. It used to take about two hours for me to do my Greek homework and two hours for my Hebrew homework. When I get back from the work at about 12 o'clock, take a bath and do my homework. By the time I finish my homework, it is time to go to college again. That used to be my routine. Saturdays and Sundays I used to sleep. And Saturday, on one Friday, when we got off from work, at about 12 o'clock at night, one of my cousins with whom I was staying nearby there, he invited me to go to Detroit because he said, my wife has some friends over there, Indians, you know, after a long time to have some friends from India and have some Indian food, we were excited to go. And I had not slept the whole week. 12 o'clock, we started our journey from Cincinnati to Detroit and we reached there early morning on Saturday. And all Saturday and Sunday, we spent time with our friends and Sunday night, we went to see something called Oli Our Nice. It's a circus-like thing. And at 12 o'clock, we got off and we started driving back to Cincinnati. It was slightly raining. It was in November 2073. I mean, sorry. 1,973. Uh, and we all slept on the wheel. You know, we were young boys at that time. I was in my 20, 22, 23, like that. And 70 mile speed limit, but nobody kept the 70 mile limit. Around we came nearby um, uh, this uh, Dayton, Ohio. Between Dayton and Cincinnati, we met with a terrible accident. Within a few minutes, the police came and asked us, how are you all? And we said we were all okay. Then the police asked us to get into his car and he dropped us in our home on Hamilton Avenue. We went to sleep. At about 11 o'clock, on Monday morning, I woke up and I started calling my brother, my cousin who was on the other room. And I found out that he was not there because at the time of accident, his wife was eight months pregnant who was in the car. And also he had a one-year-old son sleeping in the back seat. So he had taken them to a doctor for a checkup. And I just wanted to get up, but I can't. I literally dragged myself to the telephone and called one of my friends who was working with me. He was a Catholic priest and was doing his PhD in Hebrew University. He immediately came and carried me to the deaconess hospital and got me admitted. After x-rays, they found that I had a broken neck. 
and a slip disk and a cracked rib they referred me to the orthopedic specialist on tuesday morning the orthopedic specialist came looking at the x-rays he told me like this sam you are lucky if the broken bone on your neck had to move a point of an inch more you would have been paralyzed you would have been paralyzed when he said that tears started running through my eyes i didn't know what to say the first thought that came to my mind was about jonah i knew that i was running away from the will of god on that hospital bed the lord spoke to me and i said lord if i'm able to get back on my feet i will go back to india i was in the deaconess hospital for 10 days then they discharged me with a brace on my neck and a knee and one on my back some of you may remember me walking like that and uh, i had to go for physiotherapy for 3 months after physiotherapy i came and told everything that has going on in my life with brother norman wells he talked to me he presented before presented me before the church and the church unanimously wanted to send me back to india as a missionary here i am after 50 years the lord speaks to us providentially even through accidents sickness or accidents or something that happens in your family did not come to you without his knowledge he knows that is for his glorification and also for your benefit today after 50 years when i look back i know that accident was something that turned my life around he speaks to us providentially he speaks to us through his word this is the way he speaks to us today not through not through visions not through other things he speaks to us through his word the words that i speak you know john chapter 6 verse 63 he says the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life jesus said the word that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life that is how he speaks to us today there is no spirit and life in the daily newspaper there is no spirit and life in the news or poems and novels the lord speaks to us through his word the holy bible you know many a times anything that we feel as his voice which contradicts the word of god does not come from the lord i have heard about a baptist preacher called william miller later on you can look at the internet and find william miller who was a baptist preacher he proclaimed in 1831 that jesus is going to come in 1844 and he preached thousands of people joined him he said he got that from the study of daniel chapter 8 when that day came they were all disappointed which is called miller miller ne mil millerism today you can check in the internet likewise there was a preacher in kerala in the state where i was raised he was a great man of god who wrote so many hymns which we sing even today 
he found a vision that the lord is going to come five and a half years later they were disappointed and the people left after that so so many people come speaking contrary to the word of god and they believe and make mislead because it is satan's work yes the lord speaks to us today and he spoke to his servants at the marriage feast in cana of galilee you know god in his provisions he made salvation for the whole humanity without the distinction of color or with this without the distinction of nationality or language we know the truth that the whole world because of their wickedness god destroyed during the time of noah by sending a flood then the yeah, the whole earth was repopulated by the three sons of noah right ham shem and japheth when you study the history you know all the people in africa and several of the asian countries were the children of ham the jews were are of shem and the rest of the gentiles are of japheth you know when we study the first history of the church from the book of acts acts chapter 8 we see a queen's treasurer the ethiopian eunuch come all the way from ethiopia to worship the lord in jerusalem while going back god sent philip to him and preached the gospel he heard the gospel he received the gospel he accepted the gospel he accepted baptism went back to his home rejoicing representing the children of ham chapter 9 of acts we see a man called Saul of Tarsus representing the son of Shem a Jew got saved when we come to acts chapter 10 we see cornelius the centurion an italian who represented the sons of japheth got saved in chapter 10 so chapter 9 8 9 and 10 represents the children of ham children of sham children of japheth all got saved god in his wisdom prepared salvation for the whole world from the beginning and the church history starts with the conversion of all three but somewhere along the road you and me our people have failed spreading the gospel to the rest of the world and they have become ignorant you know he speaks to us through the holy spirit it was you know philip chapter 8 of acts we see philip had a great ministry going on in samaria at that time the holy spirit told him philip stop that go to gaza i have a ministry for you there he immediately obeyed and went to gaza we hear about gaza strip these days a lot that was the way that they used to go to egypt or africa there they met this queen treasurer shared the gospel god saved the holy spirit speaks now secondly remember all the lord says has threefold relationship number one you know when we read verse 11 of chapter 2 it says it is for god's glory everything that he does is for his glory and also in that verse it says so the believer or so the disciples believed so it was for their good too it was for my good 
Then it was for, of course for the guests good because they didn't have wine. It benefited the others. Verse seven and eight, we see the Lord raised. Lord said, "Fill, draw, take it." It was for His glory. Then He said in verse eleven, "God." He tells that the man he, that He manifested forth His glory, and His disciples believed Him. So be sure. that whenever he speaks to us about something in our life something that he wants us to do something that we want he wants us to obey that it is for the glory of god in other words when we listen to him and when we obey him it will always glorify him it will glorify him when the lord said fill draw and take verse 7 and 8 it to us for the servants good because there it is said the governor of the feast did not know where the wine came from none of the guests who attended the wine feast did not know where this came from but these poor servants knew where it came from how happy they would have been knowing that god used us everything the lord says is always for our good if you obey him when the lord said fill draw and take it it was for the good of everyone else everybody enjoyed that feast and everybody was benefited by that new wine so when the lord speaks to me, speaks we obey and if not only for it's not only for god's glory it is for your good and it is for my good and it is for the benefit of all the rest of the people number 3 i would like to consider how we should respond to what he says number 1 we should respond with prompt obedience whatever he says do it do it not as a duty but do it as a delight we should respond with complete obedience not only that we should do with prompt obedience but it should be a complete obedience the command was to fill in verse 7 how did they how did they obey that that verse says they filled it to the brim they did not fill half and stop they filled it to the brim dear brothers there is always a danger in partially obeying the commandment of god partial obedience is equivalent to disobedience but his command is to obey him fully number 3 we should respond with unquestioning obedience no should not ask any questions to god the word is whatever that means we must obey him without questioning or without disputing or without making any arguments they filled water when the wine was needed they didn't want any water they wanted wine but god asked him to fill the water and they did knowing that it was water they obeyed it being told to bear that to the governor of the feast they obeyed it without any question lord they wanted wine you want us you do you expect me to what carry this water that in question they did it dear brothers and sisters would you search your heart and see how do you obey the lord 
Are you willing to obey him completely when he says something? Are you willing to obey without any question? Are you willing to obey prompt obedience immediately? Then the result would come. May the Lord take the supreme leadership in our life. Shall we give ourselves to him? If you are here today and do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord gives you a chance. As I said this morning, from the beginning of the church, when the earth was populated by the three children of Noah, he, in chapter 8, he saved the Ethiopian eunuch representing the son of Ham. Send him to Africa. He went rejoicing. He spread the gospel there. Chapter 9. He saved Saul of Tarsus representing the son of Sham. He went to throughout the world and preached the gospel. Chapter 10. An Italian Cornelius, centurion Cornelius got saved. Dear brothers and sisters, we are all cousins. The Lord expects us to be saved. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ today, say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I have done. Accept me as your son, and he is willing, he is here. And if there is some part in your life which you have not given to the Lord in complete obedience without questioning, without complete obedience or without prompt obedience. May the Lord speak to us that we may give our life to him. Thank you. come and play a song here give you an opportunity to respond to the message that was given uh, it was a pretty easy one to understand right whatever he says do it <laughs> It's not always as easy to carry out, though. But you've been given a clear instruction. So go ahead and bow your head, close your eyes, and, and do some business with the Lord. If you'd like to come forward, uh, please do so. We'd love to have you. I'd be happy to talk to you. There's many around the room that would be happy to talk to you as well. So just spend some time thinking about what the Lord has laid on your heart here. Because he's telling you all to do something. I'll tell you that. But are you listening? Are you willing to follow him in the manner that he has you? All right. Well, thank you very much for being here this morning. Thank you to uh, Brother Sam for sure. Uh, he never disappoints to, to give me something that slaps me in the back of the head and, and, and make sure that uh, I, I know what the Lord has um, given to me today. So I, I trust that he has given you something as well. Uh, make sure that you do not delay in it because it only makes it harder. Uh, so appreciate that once again. Um, make sure you plan to be back tonight, 5 o'clock. We'll have our Bible study. Uh, and, you know, we have this beautiful Christmas background here. If you'd like to come up after church, we'll be taking some pictures and uh, you know, as we do. And we'll, we'll do it for the next couple weeks as well. But go ahead and dismiss in prayer now. So, dear Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that you've given to us, Lord. We thank you for uh, the message that uh, you laid on Brother Sam's heart, Lord. And I, I thank you for uh, his willingness to... Um, spread your gospel all these many years to so many people, uh, Lord, and, and just the, the fruit that we've been able to see for the labor that he's put in for you, Lord. We thank you for him. We thank you for Annie. We thank you for their ministries. 
Uh, we thank you for their faithfulness, Lord. I just pray that you would keep them safe as they travel around uh, the country over the next couple months, Lord. Just pray that you would be with each and every one of us, that we would be a guiding light to those around us, to you, Lord. We love you and we thank you and we ask all these things in your name. Amen.